Hello everybody. Back on another video. Okay, so this is another video that's going to be answering a question in the comments. And um, give a little background on it. Uh, a couple years ago or so, I don't know, it's been a while back, I did a video on talking about the current path through the power supply on B plus through the radio and back on the B minus or return back to a transformer. This is for a transformer set. And the person who uh, is wanting information that this video is going to cover is what about a all American five radio or the real true name of these are ACDC radios they're designed to work on either AC uh, power from a house outlet or on DC power from a house outlet uh, back in the day there was both out there uh, some places had DC some places had AC so these were actually designed for AC-DC operations so they could be used either either or but uh, more recently been more affectionately called American Fives because they have five tubes and uh, so what I want to do is kinda I got three different schematics uh, the other part of the question was is trying to understand um, about the meanings of circuit ground versus chassis ground versus floating ground. So we're going to first look at the current path. And uh, one of them already highlighted the other two radio uh, schematics I have not. I'll just kind of go through them and explain the pathway of the current. How it, uh, you know, you get B plus, goes through the tubes, and you get a return back on your B minus, or return, and then back to the plug. And a little bit about, you know, the pathway through the heaters, which are filaments, which are hooked in series. We also will touch on, being that we're going to talk about the differences of grounds, uh, I want to discuss a little bit about the, you know, safety precautions with these. So, let me get started on just with pathways to start with. So, in this particular one, which is a, a Sears Silvertone radio, um, Model 6403, 6404, 5, 6. Anyway, uh, several models here shown. Um, we have our plug here that's going to plug into your outlet. And when you turn on the switch and they power the radio up, we're going to have a current flow only when we're, you know, going positive on our AC signal. It'll flow current to the plate. Going through the tube will flow out following this pink highlighter to our filter Pi network, which is made up of a speaker field. Now some radios, uh, especially newer radios, uh, you know, say in the 50s, uh, maybe even late 40s, uh, they used permanent magnet speakers so they didn't have a field coil so what they'd end up doing is putting a resistor here instead of a, a coil but in any case the same difference um, we go through and through a filter uh, and we hit this main B plus line which is going to feed all uh, the tubes the plates and the screens all the way through here I went ahead and drew out where it's going to the plate and screen of the output tube the 35L6 as far as return 
um, feeds through we come out the cathode a cathode resistor and we feed back on um, the yellow line here which is where the negatives are connected uh, from the uh, capacitors or electrolytics the yellow line represents the B minus line which is going to different cathodes and some grids um, it's also known as ground and then it returns back to our plug so we have a completed circuit the other part of this will feed through the heating element that's in the rectifier tube here we will feed then through a dropping resistor the purpose of the dropping resistor is that all these tubes filament voltages do not add up to the supply voltage that's rated for which it is rated for 105 to 125 so they put this in here because these are not going to add up to that voltage so you got to burn off some uh, power somewhere and get rid of some of that voltage and when it feeds through and then feeds right back to the plug now all three of the examples I've got here and I'll show some of the current paths on some of the other two but all three examples that I'll show you here all three are a floating ground or floating B minus in other words it's not connected to the chassis uh, one way on the schematic a lot of times you can point that out not always but most you know most radios the schematic you'll have an actual line drawn in for your B minus in other words and all you got to do is just follow uh, you know where the negatives are on the electrolytics it'll connect to them for sure uh, and these you know various schematics have various different uh, symbols for electrolytics uh, one symbol here is where you've got what appears to be like a u-shape but kind of squared off u-shape here that's kind of like representing the can or the outside foil um, and it's the negative and then the positive would be just in this case a straight line in I'll show a couple other examples but you you find these negatives they'll be connected together uh, and connected to a line. Another way to find it is by the cathodes. They're going to connect either directly or indirectly, you know, indirectly meaning through a bias, biasing resistor or a cathode resistor for self biasing, such as the output tube, but they're going to connect to that B minus or ground. Now, on a schematics where the chassis is the ground, or the B minus, or return, it, uh, most cases, will show a ground symbol like right here. And it will either be, uh, it can be the typical ground symbol where you have a series of lines getting shorter and shorter, or, uh, let me get something here, I wasn't really prepared, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, I kind of drew these out advanced. Another means of showing another symbol for ground is like this. And you may have some schematics where it is a the the isolated circuit ground or a floating circuit ground or the chassis is floating where they'll show two different ground symbols. They might decide to go ahead and use this ground symbol for the circuit ground and not show any of these lines. In the schematic but this one for like chassis ground and if they do they'll have that somewhere on the schematic that ledger will be on there saying oh this is chassis ground this is circuit ground so don't worry about trying to memorize that per se just that if they do do that they'll do that they'll show that <clears throat> so in all three of these is also known as a floating chassis and the thing about that, though, we can't let it completely float. 
in other words have no connection whatsoever to anything because at that point if you do the chassis is going to be able to pick up all numerous it becomes an antenna it picks up signals it can also become capacitive coupled with the circuitry itself in the radio because you know it's point to point connection there's wires running through your radio there's wires uh, you know the B plus is a wire this B minus is a wire going point to point to point you've got your filaments they're all wired there's wires going from tube to tube to tube and so on all this can um, be up next to that chassis and when you've got a conductor versus another conductor with an insulator in between such as the wire insulation you have a capacitor so they can be capacitive coupled so you can pick up any any portion of signal in here any of the RF and AF but as well as, and generally mostly what you'll hear is more hum, is from the 60 cycles on the filaments. So they have to clamp that chassis. And they do that by various, well, there's a couple, three different ways, or three different types. Uh, this particular radio has a capacitor here. It's attaching B minus. They're going to couple it always to the B minus or circuit ground. This goes between that circuit ground and the chassis. That way, any of that signal will flow back onto this through that capacitor. It's, you know, mostly what we're looking at is AC signal anyway. And then we return back on the return path or the B minus. In a lot of cases, they may put a resistor in there as well. Um, and to a certain extent, they've actually got one here that's uh, clamping down at the antenna connection, external antenna connection. And they put a resistor here, uh, 2200 ohms. So, let me see, make sure I'm getting this. Uh, in any case, your circuit ground, whether it's connected to the chassis or it's floating, is the B minus. It's the return. So in this case, the yellow line that I highlighted yellow, it's where your negatives of your electrolytics most times will, will hook. Um, it's where your cathodes will hook. Uh, your grids will be pulled down to that through a grid leak resistor uh, such as here you got grid cap here it's coming down it's going through a 15 meg resistor coming back to here it's no different in a transformer set as far as the radio operates it's no different the only difference is, is our power supply we don't have a transformer and as far as the rest of the circuit connections though Grids are still going to hook to ground in some form or fashion eventually, and so will the cathodes, and so will um, the negatives of the of the electrolytics. Um, so they just, uh, in the case like this, it will be considered a floating ground or floating B minus because it is actually not connected to the chassis. So what they do is this lead here instead of hooking to the chassis will actually have literally physical wires connecting to point to point to point every one of the ground points throughout the radio. And generally it'll be a black wire um, so but if you want to find it in the radio one place to go look for is your negative for your Electrolytics. Now, whether it's a can that sits on top of the chassis, where the can outside of the can is actually negative, now it'll be insulated from the chassis. But uh, its connections, where it crimps on the twist locks, are connected to that can, and they'll connect to the grounds there. Or it's a capacitor like in some of the newer radios where they quit using 
so much the cans and they started using a large cardboard tube and they put the capacitor in it and you'd have like three wires or four wires depending on how many section it is coming out different colors it's the black wire generally and it's labeled on the side of the capacitor but the black wire will uh, usually be the ground but it will be labeled it'll say like the red wire well in fact I got one radio here where I'll show you like red is one of the sections positive uh, yellow I think was the other color and then black was ground so I hope I'm clearing this up and explaining it good enough to clear up the different grounds um, this is just another type in this case here we've got an actual uh, ballast tube ballast tube is nothing but a resistive tube it's got resistive elements in it and to make you know it it's got a couple resistors in there one would be this one the other one the 35z5 actually has a tap off the heater which is a little bit to one side of the heater to provide voltage for the pilot light the proper level of voltage um, this here using the 25z6 they didn't do it with that I believe 25z6 may have a tapped um, heater yeah it does there it is but I think it's center tapped I don't think it's off to one side so they had to, to come up with a, a, a dropper to produce the voltage for the pilot light you don't want to tie the pilot light directly in line you can they could have designed it to put these pilot lights in the filament line or the heater line but the problem is these are fickle pilot lights burn out all the time uh, they're cheap made and stuff they they don't burn very long and they burn out well if you had that in series here and the pilot light burned out well then you'd have to replace it or your radio won't work where you have it as a parallel to a resistor or dropper then if it burns out the radio still works you just don't have pilot light so they used the ballast they had a couple resistors the other resistor combined with that resistance makes for the major drop to bring the voltages voltage in line to the supply as far as pathway again we come through through the uh, tube the pos you know, positive going wave through our rectifier through a filter and then feed out through this line here and up through here for our various uh, plate circuits and B plus return path well we follow down our um, cathodes there and we'll find that return path comes back it's following this line here and it comes back down we see that our negative sides now these are very poorly done capacitors uh, symbols so but it comes back and there's another part here where, where it actually feeds back through here to the switch this is coming back this is a a suppression um, cap here noise suppression and then the last one and I hope you can see this one this one here and I'm gonna to try to see if I can zoom in on a little better um, because this is typical Philco in riders uh, let me try to zoom in come on focus okay hopefully you can see that this actually got the color coding on the uh, electrolytics red is um, one positive for they're both 20 microfarad it's a two uh, section cap but it has red wire for one of them a yellow wire for the other one and then the grounds which actually will be a single wire it won't be two separate wires like they're showing in the schematic is black so again we you know 
we fire up a radio, we turn the switch on, we're going to have coming through here again another one that's got a resistor for the pilot light. Uh, come up through the tube, come through a power supply, feed up to we break here for both the screen and the plate voltage of the output tube. Um, this line will be your B plus falling through here. It's going up to all the plates. Uh, return will come back on the cathode, which will be our negative or ground. Comes back through here. This is the main uh, ground branch through here, or, or B minus return. Coming down here, and of course we're hooking the electrolytics, and we feed back through the, the uh, plug through the switch. Now, Philco, especially in the 30s and early 40s pre-war was notorious for using this type of setup and let me get that moved over so you can actually see it um, a capacitor in series with a coil this coil was hand round around the capacitor and attached in but this is the connection that is locking down that chassis that's floating um, this radio here would be this capacitor here now some of the radios, the front ends, especially the ones that had aerial antennas. Um, okay, We'll have the front ends actually also hook into the chassis. Same way with the Philco here. Right here. So anyway, um, I'm hoping that that answered your question. If not, you can give me another comment and we'll go over it again. Uh, but I hope that clarified how the pathway is and everything and and how the um, what the grounds mean and stuff. Which, by the way, uh, as a side point to this, uh, I will always call them grounds because everybody calls them grounds. It is just a common name. Um, these symbols, grounds, whatever. But in actuality, they're not really ground. Um, they're, uh, as far as the circuit goes, there is B minus return. And as far as the chassis, unless it's, uh, it's not really ground per se, uh, you could think of it as also as B minus, even though it has to clamp down through a capacitor if it's floating uh, is still part of that B minus circuitry but you know uh, the the standard naming uh, the common name is ground and you don't want to get involved in trying to pick out several different words or confuse people with what things so as far as really most of the time when I talk about circuits I will just call it ground um, because it's just simpler that way so anyway if you like the video give it the the usual thumbs up and please comment I I may not answer the comments a whole lot um, I will do a video like once a month on just answering general comments if there's some uh, really you know a a question that someone's asking a comment that I need to do video on then I'll do a video on that uh, but I do read every one of them and you know not only do they give me ideas about future videos but they also just encourage me and help me along you guys are quite kind in your comments and if you haven't subscribed and you like learning about vintage electronics anyway especially which, you know, some uh, can pertain to modern day electronics. Uh, and you know, also I show radios and test equipment and everything else. Uh, just subscribe if you haven't, you know. And uh, so anyway, I guess I'll end this video here. Uh, the next video will be another answer to a comment or actually a message. Someone was asking about uh, understanding multifunction switches on schematics. And I think a lot of people have troubles with them. 
and stuff. So we'll kind of go through that and and try to hopefully help you along with those. So anyway, I hope this has answered anybody's questions about you know the grounds and about the uh, All American Five circuit paths and uh, the current path and everything in the radio and it's from the power supply and back. So I'll guess I'll see you guys on the next video and uh, thanks for joining in and watching and y'all have a good day and I'll say bye now.